What's up guys, I got Ahmed Ali here from Pro Play Games, coming off of a hot League Cup win. Uh, tell me what you played. Hey guys, I played Gardevoir GX. Uh, I played it because I felt like it was the the best deck in the format. You know, it can kind of just beat everything except for metal, but uh, you kind of just beat metal anyway because you're it's, it's so strong you, you, you have the option to do it. Um, but yeah, so I played Gardevoir GX. I didn't want to play Volcanion because I felt like Volcanion isn't doesn't have a good matchup towards Gardevoir GX. So awesome. Uh, well, let's go over the list really quick. Sure. Let's have a look. All right. So uh, we'll start off with the the little dudes. So I played a four two uh, three one Gardevoir GX line. Uh, so the reason why I chose chose two Curlia. Uh, instead of the, the typical three is because, I mean, usually you just want a Rare Candy. Rare Candy is such a stronger play than, uh, you know, slowly evolving them. The slow evolve is more consistent, but the uh, the Rare Candy is much more powerful. Uh, so I decided to max out Rare Candies instead of playing three of each. Uh, and then the Glade is there because of the Premonition ability, and also it's a great non-GX attacker. It can destroy Ninetales, and, uh, I mean... And then, again, like, the Premonition ability literally just wins games because you get to just choose the top five cards of your deck or you look at the top five cards of your deck and just pull up whenever you want, and that's pre-supporter uh, when, when using combination with Artillery. And then the three Gardevoir is really all you need. You kind of only need two, so... Um, but you play three because, you know, you need... So, so you can have two in case you prize one or you have to discard one early or something like that. Um, and then the next card on the list is uh, the Jirachi uh, XY67. So the Jirachi is actually pretty good uh, in the mirror uh, because with the Choice Band, he can deal 80 damage, and that leaves 150 left on the Gardevoir GX, which is only five energies between the two of you. Uh, so it sets up really easy uh, KOs uh, for the for the two uh, with the two-hit uh, combo. And then on top of that, you become immune. So uh, it becomes really hard to, to you know maneuver around. Um, they could Guzma around it, but the Guzming requires a free retreater, and also if I just don't have energy on the bench, then they're not really taking a knockout, they're just Guzming and taking a hit, uh, which they've already taken a hit for. So, uh, but I've hit them with a non-GX, uh, one prize attacker with one energy, and they've, you know, invested a stage two, uh, with several energy on it that's worth two prizes. Uh, the, the next card is three Lele. I think three Lele is, is necessary. Uh, I kind of wanted four to just guarantee the turn one Bridget even more. Uh, but, you know, there's not enough space. Uh, the next card is Vulpix. Vulpix is, uh, is great. It's a way better card than uh, Deancey or uh, Sylveon. Uh, first of all, to pull off a Deancey or Sylveon turn one, you have to uh, have it either in the active, or you need to find a float stone and then attach to it, um, which is, I mean, it's just unnecessary. It's just, just so less consistent than, than the Vulpix. Uh, the Vulpix, you just bridge it, and then you attach to whatever is active, and all of your basics have one retreat cost. So you just re uh, attach it, and then you, you Vulpix turn one if you're going second. And it makes going second not even that bad, uh, which is kind of why I like this deck so much. Um, the next cards are the 2-1 Octillery. Octillery is just there for, for N guarding, because N is such a strong card in the format right now. Uh, especially without Versus Seekers, you have less access to supporters except for Lele. But if you don't have bench space, then you need the Octillery. Um, so usually my turn ones usually look like this. I, I start with whatever. Uh, I bridge it for... Uh, I want at least two Ralts on my bench. Um, a Vulpix and uh, Remberade. So if I start a Ralts, then, you know, I just for one of each, you know, etc. Depending on what I start with. If I start with a Lele, then I just get two Ralts and a... and uh, and I go first, then I get two Ralts and uh, a Remoraid, and then uh, the next turn, I usually just Ultra Ball for the, the Vulpix, or if I'm lucky enough to get a turn two Gardevoir, which actually happens a lot because I play forward candy, uh, then, you know, then I just go on with that. Yeah. Uh, two Field Blowers... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, tell me about the 2-1 Octillery. Uh, I've seen a lot of people playing a 1-1 one, one or a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, what was the thought process there? So the thought process is I really want to just either start it or I wanted to uh, not prize one because usually you just prize a piece of the puzzle. I actually just ended up prizing a bunch of them anyway. 
uh, I, I, I ended up prizing, sorry, the, the Octillery. Uh, one time I prized the whole, the trio. I prized all three, uh, which was insane. <laughs> just, just hilarious. Because uh, I chose this line to, to avoid prizing, but I just kept prizing the Octillery. So I just prized the one that did matter most. Uh, it's just it's just funny, um, right? Uh, do you want me to go ahead and talk about the the yeah. bars now? Or yeah, let's yeah, go so, on to the trainers. All right, so the trainers. Uh, the first thing on the list here is the field blowers, which are the most non consequential items of the list. The only thing they're really used for is Gardevoir, uh, Garbodor, and uh, and to to murder uh, uh, fighting fear belts. So if you know somebody's playing Volcanion and they're playing fighting fear belt. And they, uh, they're they playing against Turtonator. I mean, Turtonator, you need seven energies without a Fury Belt, and with a Fury Belt, you need to add uh, uh, two more. So you have to do 240, which is like a Gardevoir uh, hit. Uh, but they often have only one energy left on their Turtonator after they attack. So uh, if you don't have Field Blower, then you need to stack six energies on your... Or, sorry, seven energies on your guy to, to be able to attack. So it's a, it's a really... Uh, it's really just a a plus power in a way versus Volcano. And then against Garbodor, you can't use any of your abilities. So you can't use Octillery, you can't use Volade, you can't use uh, Lele, uh, you can't use Gardevoir. <laughs> I mean, all your all your guys in this deck have uh, abilities. So um, yeah, if you if you manage to if you manage to keep the the tool off Garbodor, then you kind of win. Uh, usually, you just play it so that you can get a turn of turn of abilities, and you set up a Gardevoir where you can knock out the 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 tra the Garbotoxin Garbodor, and um, once you get that knockout, the, the game is pretty downhill. Uh, the next card on the list is the four rare candy, and four rare candy is very imperative. Um, like I said before, people try to go for the more Perlias instead of more rare candies, so they do three three. But the two four is is way better because having actual Gardevoirs on your bench uh, turn two is is much stronger of a play than having you know. You know, two curly is in a Ralts. Uh, uh, the next card is the stretcher and rescue, and sorry, the rescue stretcher and the, and the super rods. The super rod helps you get back energies, which is why it's in there. But rescue stretcher just lets you pick up, you know, a stage two. Maybe you dropped a stage two in your, your discard and you have a rare candy in your hand. So it's another out to that. You can also Skyla for it to, to get it immediately into your hand. Um, the And then the super rod is. In, yeah, it completely necessary because it, it's just energies. I mean, there was a lot of times where we would just put three energies back in my deck and then, you know, try to delay Octillery combo to get more energies in my hand uh, to, you know, take knockouts. Uh, for Ultra Ball, it's uh, pretty standard. Uh, you want to find Lele's turn one. So you have between Bridget, three Lele's, and four Ultra Ball, you have eight outs to turn one Bridget, uh, which, is, which is what you usually want unless you start a bunch of basics. Um, the next card is Acerola. Acerola is really helpful in the mirror. It's super helpful in the mirror because you, you, the mirror is usually two shots. It's never one shot. It's in this, like the last shot of the game. Um, so, I mean, what you do is you attack with a Gardevoir with one energy uh, versus their Gardevoir with however many energy they have. And uh, and then you scoop it up and then you put it on... Uh, you just re-evolve something else, which is also another reason why you play uh, for a candy. So you can evolve a second Ralts. Uh, and then you, you just reattach the energy and you, you two-shot them, but you have a clean Gardevoir first, so you just reset that damage, you set your opponent back further. Um, and then, again, Bridget Bridget just gets you your entire uh, everything. And uh, the next card is three Guzma. Uh, some people pl opt to play four Guzma, uh, which is uh, weird. Uh... I don't think you need to play four. I think four is too many, especially with uh, with your Twilight GX. You have recovery on them, so you can play up to six Guzma if you have three, and then you know you play another three. Uh, three N, three N is kind of low. It seems like it's low to a lot of people, but when I play this deck, I'm usually winning. Uh, so I never need N except for draw support early game. I don't really need it for the end game. Um, plus, for draw support, I mean we have Octillery and. and uh, and delayed, so we don't really need to, to do any of that. Um, the last card is, and then Skyla is, is super important. Uh, it's it helps you find your rare candies. So you, so if you uh, start, you know, if you have a pretty dead hand, you can uh, 
uh, without a rare candy, but you have a bunch of Gardevoirs. You can, you know, always Skyla for a rare candy to get the Gardevoir. Alternatively, you can uh, you can use Lele. Uh, so, you, so you Vulpix for a Lele and a Gardevoir when you have Ralts on the bench, and then you just automatically get the turn two. It's like the easiest way to get the turn two uh, to start attacking and building up pressure with. Um, and then three choice band is also designed for the mirror. It's because, you know, the less energy you have on yourself, the less vulnerable you are to a one-hit KO. So choice band allows you to do the extra damage without committing the extra energy. Um, two floatstone, you know, you have some fatties on the bench, uh, like the, the Glade and the, and the Octillery. I mean, you just stick it on there so that, you know, you have, you have an out to retreat. It's not very, it's not super, um, uh, it's pretty standard, uh, and then for DCE, obviously, because you want to be able to to use DCE because the the attack reads energy, not energy parts. So DCE it counts as two of them, and then eight fairy, which is you know enough of what you need uh, to to get it going. Awesome, that looks really cool. Um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> so tell me about the tournament. Um, uh, did you or did you have any tough spots in there? Um, Obviously, you won, but how'd you get there? So, I mean, well, actually, it w there was a tough spot. I did lose my first round. Uh, my first round was against Gardevoir GX. It was in the mirror, and uh, my opponent just really went off, and I couldn't, I couldn't get anything going. Uh, it ended me into a super dead hand. My hand was really great, because uh, you went first. My hand was great. I was going to have the Vulpix. I had two rare in hand, so I was going to Vulpix for, for two Gardevoir, and I had, a, I had a Sigmore following, plus, you know, energies and things like that. I even had the Floatstone to bridge it into the Vulpix, but he ended me into, like, nothing. And then, uh, he also ended himself into nothing, but he, he got it off uh, a little bit better. Uh, he got a Gardevoir tier 2, but he didn't have any energies. Uh, but he had, his board was completely set up before mine was, so. Um, he also par played a Parallel City, which kind of makes set setting up a little bit harder than, than usual, but. Uh, anyway, sorry. Uh, round 2 was against Snorlax uh, stuff, like Snorlax GX, you know, the, the promo GX. It wasn't super competitive, and I don't really need to go into detail that much. Uh, round three was the, uh, again the mirror, but you know the four rare candies helped me because I was able to get you know three Gardevoirs and the Glade uh, by like turn five, and uh, you know his I kept his board completely empty, and that was that. Round four was against Metagross. Uh, I beat Metagross just by being over consistent. I, I made a bunch of risky plays uh, that if he had the outs to. Um, he would have won, but you know I was playing against Gardevoir. Or I was playing against Metagross, so sometimes you just want to play against risky plays. Uh, you just want to make risky plays when you're playing against the Alwas, because otherwise you might just lose. Uh, there were some turns where he had you know energies on on one guy, and I could knock it out with a Lele, uh, but that would leave me supporterless for the rest of the turn. But you know by knocking out that, he ran out of energies, and I was able to clean sweep uh, with just the Lele, and then uh, and then you know, take my final prizes with uh, Gardevoir GX. Uh, and then round five was an ID, because I was 3-1-1, and then I bubbled in, well, not bubbled in, but there was one bubble out uh, at ninth place, so that was unfortunate for him, and I thought my resistance was going to be pretty bad, because I lost round one, but it wasn't. Uh, Ryan's was a little bit worse, and then there was a ninth place, who, who was actually worse than both of us. Uh, so, then, so, and now we're on to top eight. Uh, top eight, uh, played against Volcanion, and uh, I don't know if you know this, but I'm pretty famous for for playing Volcanion. But uh, you know, I I don't think it's that great right now in the format. I think it's pretty good. Uh, I think it beats all the things that Gardevoir can't beat because there's a lot of people trying to beat Gardevoir, so they're playing a bunch of metal and a bunch of random crap. Uh, so Volcanion is the answer to that, but uh, it doesn't beat Gardevoir itself, which is the best deck. So I didn't. So I played the best deck instead of the, the deck that beats everything but the best deck. Uh, anyway, I, I went 2-1 against that matchup. Uh, it was pretty solid. Game 1 I set up fine, and I just took the game. Game 2 I didn't set up, so he uh, he took me out. And then Game 3 I, I set up, so I, I just won the game. Uh, top 4 was against Espeon Garb. Espeon Garb is a little bit tough, especially since he plays the Espeon EX as well. That's, you know, with the Miracle Shrine ability, or Mil Miraculous, yeah, Miraculous Shrine. Uh, and uh, what it does is it, it picks up your, your Pokemon and puts them back in your hand. So if you play with Potown or you play with things that spread damage like Divide GX, then you uh, you kind of just lose Gardevoirs by them just miraculously striding. He was too set on that idea, and it, it was his downfall because I just 
played around it because uh, I just attacked his SB on the Lele and didn't evolve my my Ralts. and then so or I would evolve it once so he would like want to get rid of the 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 rare candy that I used uh, so we just play it again but then I you know I played for four rare candy so I just rare candied it again after I killed it because I just hit it twice with the with a DC and a choice ban. Uh, and then I lose the Lele, but then I have a, a Gardevoir that's pretty fresh on the field. And then, uh, you know, I just sweep the game from there. Uh, turn, and then the, the finals was against you, Ryan, uh, the Vulcanian. And uh, there was a point in the game where I thought I had knocked out his Turnator, and it was funny, this is game two, uh, and uh, yeah, I too owed you. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, said, oh, wait. I remember. Uh, oh wait, I didn't take my prizes, but I didn't knock you out. I only did 180 to your Terminator. Um, it was really sad, but uh, yeah, I only did 180 to it, and then uh, so then you got to take prizes because I looked at my prizes. But luckily, you trusted me because you knew I wouldn't cheat you, and I didn't. Uh, but but yeah, I looked at my prizes and then I shuffled them in my deck. But I I told you what they were. Uh, so that looked kind of bad for everybody, but it was it was a funny moment because we all were like, yeah, duh, you should have two prizes. <laughs> then <laughs> we immediately changed our minds when we saw the board state. Um, but otherwise, you know, it's kind of easy. The, the way the matchup goes is you kind of just set up a bunch of Gardevoir GXs, and they can knock out one or two, but they can't knock out enough to take the, the game. So after you end them, they kind of just lose because their hand size is small and their board is crap. So, yep. Awesome. Uh, so you like Gardevoir? It's that a deck you'd stick with going forward? Uh, I yeah, I do think I would stick with it going forward. I think the metal should settle down a little bit to to like for people to realize that you know you can't just play things that beat Gardevoir because you're not going to play ten Gardevoirs. Uh, you have to play things that also beat other things, and it's a little bit difficult right now. But I think the only thing that can beat almost anything is Garbodor, uh with maybe Espeon or Glissapod, just because. It's so versatile, and you know, it it can put your opponent in such bad pressure positions that they they just can't one shot um, their goal spots. And then with Forest Rollers, you know, you get out. Um, but people keep trying to play things like Metagross and like Bisharp, Jank, and none of those are good. You know, they all lose to something. So I don't know. That's my take on it. I would play Gardevoir, but I wouldn't play it for the next two weeks. I would let people, you know, decide what they want to play first. And hopefully it's not metal, because metal's trash. It literally beats nothing but Gardevoir GX. Well, I, I guess it doesn't always beat Gardevoir, too. Yeah, yeah. He he learned that the hard way. He was actually pretty upset. He was like, man, I can't believe I lost the only deck that I came here to beat. I was like, well, I don't want to tell you, uh, but, you know, your Metagross sucks. <laughs> <laughs> And, and yeah, Gard Gardevoir is a really strong deck. I mean, it, just the fact that it can hit infinite numbers and just has such high HP is just it's just devastating. I mean, it, the Metagross matchup really isn't, you know, 10, 90 like people think it is. It's closer to 30, 70, maybe even 40, 60. Uh, just because you can one-shot Metagrosses and slow them down. Uh, it just depends on how you play the matchup. Uh, things you can do to tech for the Metagross matchup is you can replace the Jirachi with the uh, um, a Turtonator. So Turtonator plus a Choice Band, you know, is 100 damage to a Metagross. And if they hit it, they take another 80 and you just smack them. Um, so, uh, unless they have, like, Max Potion in hand or something, I mean, they're going to take 80 damage. And then after they take that 80 damage, I think you just... You can clean it with a, with a Gardevoir GX. But that's just my take on it. Or even a Glade or something. I mean, it, there's just ways to go or get around it. So. Yeah, awesome. Um... So once again, this is Ahmed Ali with Pro Play Games. Uh, congratulations on your win! Thank um, you. Uh, again, brought to you by Pro Play Games and Ultra Pro Sleeves and products. Oh yeah, uh, I did use those place Ultra Pro Sleeves for this event. I, I had to go buy some, and then I used them. Uh, and they <laughs> they are by far my favorite sleeves. Um, it's just the yeah, they're my favorite sleeves. Awesome. Well, we'll see you next time, then. Thank you. I play just double dragoons. Three of these. Um, just one and one.